So welcome. This is episode 346 of the Clive Barker podcast and episode 12 of Jericho Squad 77, our Dungeons and Dragons game based in the Clive Barker world. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, after the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. off uh we are going to all tell the the uh, the recap and uh st starting with pancake because she got the highest initiative for some reason even though she's got plus zero uh so pancake says while you guys were gone some crazy stuff went down at the at the debates uh business went was booming and uh musette and um uh, Musette was and Chertovir were really angry that I sold the VCR in the movies. Uh, they sent me out on some kind of uh, some kind of snipe hunt to get a, a cable for for a movie player that already has a cable. So I don't know what to do. I'm afraid to go back. Okay, so after the battle, yeah. we rescued Bentley from from the the water because he was floating face down, and we he was hurt pretty bad. I talked to um, to the head of the council after we rescued Bentley. Uh, we woke up Bentley and uh, had to get ready for the inspection from the fuzz. And uh, we did a lot of discussion and very little action. We uh, took the magic runes and trunked them down and hid them out in the in the alleyway. Honestly, I've been trying to lay low and behave myself, so. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm the healer. <laughs> I need to be here. <laughs> Bentley is next. Uh, he says, well, I lost track of time for a while. Uh, but, but I know once we got back, uh, there was a huge crowd at the store. Um, lots of stuff was bought. Lots of stuff was sold. And uh, Musette and and uh, and Chertovir were mad about the videos being sold. Which is weird, because Chertovir never wanted to watch any videos. It says, then, yeah. then this uh, <coughs> investigator came to talk to us, and he seemed like he knew things that he wasn't telling. And then in order to hide from the investigator, I took some stuff and disappeared through the portal. Transporter. So now I'm that? hiding away with a sword. <coughs> I'm just concerned about Pancake continuously trying to throw us under the bus. <laughs> Considering Pancake attacked Chodavir and me at, when I just like got here. So, yeah. They're it trying is a to steal us. Of mine. Thank you. <laughs> After the initial investigation, you guys asked Dexter to leave and come back in the morning. And you use that time to hide as much incriminating evidence as you could in the Fifth Dominion in uh, Squad Two's uh, base, and uh, and uh, Ralph went with it. He Ralph took all the stuff, and uh, and so now he's come back. He had a little uh, he had a little bit of an argument with Chertovir, and uh, everybody went downstairs. That's my memory of it. Right, and uh, and that's where we left off. Oh, and he's also really angry uh, with Jonathan, and he doesn't feel that Jonathan has human rights. Because he pooped on his head. Yeah, because he's a bird. Yeah. 
So you all start heading downstairs. Uh, you you notice that um, Dexter is is looking around uh, intently. At, he looks at each of your your uh, bedroom doors. He looks at the table. And when he gets to the bottom of the stairs, he kind of crouches down and looks under the table. And he looks at the the rug that seems to be um, folded down into an inset in the floor where the tiles are missing. He looks in the kitchen. Uh, he looks around at you guys, and he says, "Please have a seat." I don't sit. Yeah, it's <laughs> you just don't a have... <laughs> yeah. function of biology. On... Do you stand yeah. on the table? No, I'm gonna stand on the counter away from everybody. Okay. <laughs> so that that, um, that Jonathan, you were talking about standing on a counter. There is a, a there's the desk that used to have the computer on it, uh, down to the south of the main table. Okay, uh, he says, all right, I know we kind of uh, got off on a bad foot. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, many of the questions that I asked you yesterday, I, know that I knew the answers already, and I was just uh, trying to test how truthful you were. So, w w uh, the other thing is, Churduvir, when you lie, you have a tell. I'm not going okay. to tell you what it is, but you have a tell. Uh, so first of all, Cassius Breyer uh, submitted a, a lengthy report about Jericho Squad and its activities. He described the area underneath the shop. He described where it was, what you all do, to the best of his uh, his knowledge, since he left months ago. So I know all this. My main reason for questioning here, and you'll you'll forgive me for not being straightforward with this from the start. Unlikely. We need. He glares at you for a second. <laughs> he says, uh, just out of curiosity, whose pet is this? So we're supposed to be honest to you, but you're not supposed to be honest with us. I this just told bullshit. you I'm going to be honest with you, and you interrupted. And I told you I was being honest with you. Whose pet is. He points at, at Jonathan. He says, whose pet is this? He's not a pet, he's a friend. So he doesn't belong to any of you. He, in a he, sense, he belongs he to all out, of us. Uh, he pulled out a, a handful of gold coins and he puts them back in his pocket. Okay, that's good to know. If he dies, I don't owe any of you any money. Wow. That's not very nice. Yeah, that's... What this do you mean, a, if he dies? That, that sounds like you're threatening right now. It does sound uh, very threatening. <laughs> a, str a stray bird wandered into your store... And if I killed it, uh, you would say that that was mean? I just told oh. you it wasn't a stray bird. He uh, He's a friend. No, I think he's trying to help us. He, he, okay. That, that, uh, that's, that stray bird shit on my shirt. You know, if that happened to you, it you, happens. what would you do? Uh, glare at him, maybe. But, you know, birds are birds. Birds are gonna hey, be I'm that just way. putting the shit where it belongs. Shut up, Jonathan. Don't make this any worse. Oh, I didn't expect this to escalate so fast. I don't have his character sheet up yet. Whoa, whoa. You know, we're not escalating anything. <laughs> we're just talking here. I don't know. I mean, he stormed in pretty ready to... I mean, he had already made his decision. Look, Dexter, can we just cut to the point? Uh, I mean, obviously, you're pretty well informed. What Busy. do you want? And see, there it is. That's his tell. He just ends up telling. <laughs> his tell is that he's bad at lying. He, well, then he, he just tells the truth. Well, <laughs> look, he I already mean, knows. He or, I didn't say anything. I just say he knows what he knows. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he knows a lot because that rat Cassius Breyer, you know, already gave him a report. So, I mean, guys, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, sure. <laughs> he stops looking at Jonathan. First of all, the events of the, uh, of the uh, unfortunate debate um, are, ev will stick in everyone's memories forever. There's video record of it. As far as I'm concerned, you all saved the... Uh, the government of of the of the five dominions thank you but 
uh, one thing that that you did is the the prime culprit, right? Is uh, is somewhere where we can't reach him. We can't bring him to justice, and that's a problem. So what I need from you is I need to know where he is and how he how we can retrieve him. Does anybody want to take this question or? I mean, I'm the I one still, who sent him. I still admit nothing. I don't know who the prime culprit is. There was a lot going on. Um, well, C- Cassius Breyer seemed to have instigated the entire events of that day. Am I am I correct? Uh, yes, not only that, but he tried to interfere into the election process in many ways. Uh, he personally attacked my brother. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but he he did kidnap my brother, and I had to rescue him with 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 some friends. He was responsible for a lot of a lot of stuff that was going wrong with his uh, Aboriginal children. Uh, uh, you're aware of the Aboriginal children, right? Oh yes, yes. Uh, they've they've uh, they've started to become more and more vocal, more problematic, and they've started to. Uh to attempt to infiltrate government obviously you, I mean, you, right. you all had to deal with the results yep um so so as a, a sidebar here you you know um every time every time you guys are making a statement uh he has been checking to see if you're lying and you guys can have the ability to do the same thing you just say do i believe him and you can roll an insight check to see okay. if you believe him or not Okay. I don't need to roll. I don't believe a word he says. Okay. It is kind of weird that he like backed off and all of a sudden is changing how he's uh, his line of questioning has changed mm-hmm. dramatically. Welcome to interrogation 101. <laughs> okay, I'll just never talk again. <laughs> Churduvir, you seem extremely reluctant to tell where he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe explain, I've told you that. Explain uh, why why that is. Uh, he is in a, another dimension. He. I know. I mean, I know he's in another dimension. I need to know what it's called and how to get there. Oh, go to hell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, oh, um... uh, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's where is that where I need to go? Oh no, never mind. It's it's just from where I'm from. It's it's just something we say. So he went to I'm... where you're from? Oh no, 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 no. I'm saying the the saying go to hell is from where I'm from. So um Okay. Yeah. I'm just feeling well, what, what's the uh, what is what is that at mean? The moment. It well, means you... I'm getting tired of being questioned about things that you say that you've already seen. Well, this is a this Fair is a point. question that I don't know the answer to. I need so, to know where he is so that we so, can retrieve him and bring him to justice. Okay, and why, we need to get to the bottom of this Aboriginal children movement, and mm-hmm. uh, and uh, shut it down. Okay, so Dexter, here's the mm-hmm. thing. I already told you that he was sent to another dimension. Yep, we've established that many times now. We've extracted him from the uh, the the first dominion, um, the second dominion, because he was a danger to the whole government of of the Imagica, right? I mean, he was he was uh, I'm going to stop you to there. A... Okay. We've established why you sent him away and we've mm-hmm. established that you sent him away to another dimension. Right. So, I need to know where you sent him. What is the dimension that you sent him to? How do I get there to get him back? I don't know how to get there. I can tell you that the dimension is called hell. And it is a place where he's trapped. I honestly, why would you want to bring him back here? He's dangerous. We want to bring him back here to bring him to justice and to get to the bottom of the Aboriginal children movement. I'm, I mean, <laughs> with all due respect, that is your job as an investigator. And, and as you're a, hindering my job by not telling. Well, you can handle with the uh, children of the Aboriginal with whatever forces you have at your disposal. I mean, why do you need Cassius Breyer for that? Because he'll tell me where they are. Well, I mean, why would he tell you where they are to help you arrest them or, you know, dismantle them? He, he, it's his, in his best interest to not tell you anything. 
Yeah, you, you know, and in, in my experience, it, you don't seem to have very good luck in interrogating people. I mean, just kind of in in my experience from what I've seen here. Well, uh, originally, Chertovir didn't tell me where he is, but now he has. Yep. So I, I also learned that you uh, your first response to a question is to lie. And we Which learned makes that makes me was a little your, bit suspicious of your what you're response doing here. as well. So you can imagine why we're a little bit suspicious as well. I mean, you come here threatening to arrest us, and now say you're saying you want our help. You know, maybe next time lead with the "I need your help" part. Yeah, mm-hmm. it it does tend to go a little bit better mm-hmm. when you're honest from the get go. <laughs> you would think so. Yeah. And also, we just saved the government of the Second Dominion from being taken over by a hostile figure who obviously had no intention of playing fair. And he is now... the outward appearance, but your motives are also questionable. He was also your brother's political opponent. That was an unfortunate uh, (laughs) detail. (laughs) That was an unfortunate detail because obviously he was trying to attain power and my brother was also in all honesty trying to uh serve the government he was trying to be a good servant of the people so he applied to be a a run for office to be the representative it just happened that the act of him trying to serve the second dominion made him a direct enemy of cassius Breyer. yeah inspector it just we told you everything we know he's in a dimension of never-ending torment we do not know how to get there I am not a cosmologist, so I don't know exactly what it is. He's gone. Well, how, how did you open the portal to to send him there in the first place? I how had does anything scroll. happen in these planes? Magic. Yeah, it was okay, a well, magical can scroll. You, can do you can you reproduce that scroll? Do you have it again? I do not. Nope. It was a one time thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm sorry, Inspector. We can't help you. What about your express here? And he lifts the rug up underneath the table. Where mm-hmm. are your tiles? Out. Why? Uh, are you looking to repair them? I mean, <laughs> I, what does this have to do with the investigation? It seems to they me are certainly that you could not use, with the Aboriginal could, children. It seems to me that you could use this to get to him, and you would probably, if you were able to send him to hell, if you've been there. You would probably know the configuration to go there and retrieve him. I don't think it works that way. I think you need to have another transporter on the other side, and I don't believe that there's a transporter in that dimension at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how any of this stuff works. It seems like you know a lot more than we do, so yeah. okay, well, you then can dial this thing this. into hell. Where, where did you get the scroll? welcome to in your own home. Personally, I'd rather not do that here, if it's even possible. You'd rather not go to hell from here? Where did the scroll come from? It was planned for somebody at some point. It, it was but given to us. That's a different story. It was given to me by an entity that is also in that same plane of existence. So I have no way of getting to there. You know, I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. Walk me through this creature and where you met it and how it gave you the, the scroll. Well, it was it was in a battle for our lives. Um, Where was the battle? Before I tell you something else, I need to know <laughs> really what 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 are your intentions here? I mean, you've mentioned that we've saved the government, and obviously we did a good thing, but you're treating us like criminals. Well, uh, so far you seem reluctant. Uh, to help me to retrieve Cassius Briar to bring him to justice. Yes, because one, I don't know how to get him back. Two, I'm not interested in getting him back. And third, he's dangerous. And I think if we help you bring him back to the Second Dominion, he's just going to escape and do the same thing all over again. Oh, trust me. Well, he's not, I don't he's even not think we can help. Escape. So, I mean, I really think we're done here. I don't yeah. really, yeah. Good luck to you, Inspector, with your endeavors. Um, they seem honorable, even if you do not. Yep. Uh, but I, I think we've exhausted everything we can do for you. No, 
You know things that you're deliberately withholding. I, I, from my investigation. I think you vastly overestimate my retention. <laughs> <laughs> I am just a dumb bird after all. Well, I wasn't even asking you any questions. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to hop off and go start making pancakes very loudly. Yeah, and actually but, you see that uh, that but, uh, that um, Bendley is already in there making pancakes. Okay, I'm going to go help. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but like really oh. bang pots and pans around like Okay. Like your mom when you're supposed to be getting <laughs> up and you're still asleep. Please understand that if I if I want to know who this creature is that gave you the scroll, it's because I want to get there myself. I'm not asking you to go with me. Uh, I can, I'm perfectly capable of uh, bringing a large enough force to extract him and bring him to justice here in the Second Dominion. I just want to know the name and where to go to meet this, this creature so that i can uh so that i can go my go there myself just like you sent uh just like you created a way i want to create a way uh to get there and bring cassius briar back and bring him to justice well i didn't create a way to go to hell i've met I, the creature already here and then they transported themselves back to their dimension after giving me the scroll so i honestly you, you created don't... a way with the scroll it's on video we saw it yes but i'm saying when i met that creature they were within the imagica and then they trans they gave me the scroll and they transported themselves back to their own dimension where i could not follow so How did they do that well they're from that dimension they're powerful creatures i actually don't believe that you would be able to find any sort of even if you could go there i don't believe that you could bring any sort of expeditionary force that would be strong enough to extract cassius briar these are okay well make a deception these... check okay deception you, check because you you do you you definitely know how how he got there <laughs> okay uh deception let's see where is deception sorry it's uh they're alphabetical Okay, so right deception. There it is. Oh boy, this is a plus one. Uh oh. <clears throat> Eleven. <laughs> he says, "See, I thought we were. Uh, I thought things were going better, and you just lied to me again." What are you, a lie detector? In, in a way, yes. Uh, I, I am a, definitely a lie detector for you. Well, what's your proof that I'm lying? I told you I'm. You have a tell, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. If I tell okay, you, okay, I'm it seriously is, you'll stop bored of this it. conversation. Sorry, I know I said I wasn't going to talk anymore, but I'm bored. And where are those pancakes? Amen. Okay. Um. What's what? What pancake? Damn it! <laughs> you are a jerk, and you are making me more. Okay. So if I tell you where where we came across these creatures, you said that you didn't need our help anymore afterwards. Is that correct? I need a way to get there. Okay. The last we saw them was in the African desert in Tunisia. And, that, and I'm assuming that's in the Fifth Dominion. Yes. I don't know, Mr. Investigator. And I can give you the coordinates. It and it is a palace built by a Gregorius. And that's all the information I'm going to give you. And please go away now. <laughs> I want pancakes. There you go. <laughs> okay. And Bentley starts bringing pancakes out, and he's uh, he's sort of shooing shooing Jonathan off the plate that while he's bringing the plate in. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, everybody, make a perception check. Oh boy. Thirteen. <laughs> I'm okay. clueless. I got twelve. I'm distracted. So you do a plus. Perception? Yeah. Okay, 22. Oh, wow. So it, it was there, everybody else was low, but, but Buzette got a 22? I mean, I got above average. I got 13. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got 12. I'm All too, right. I'm, I'm what do you too call hungry it low? to receive. But do I get well, a, yeah. do it? 
But I well, was the one talking and throwing the idea out, so maybe yeah. Like, so that helps. while while you were uh, while you're kind of angrily talking to him and giving him the information about Gregorius's false hell, uh, you hear a knock at the door upstairs. Oh, Jonathan, you want to get that? Not especially. Yeah, I mean, do. I don't have fucking thumbs, so <laughs> um, maybe you I, could find I can somebody go, else. I can go <laughs> see who's at the door. <laughs> Like it feels like I'm not doing very well down here anyway. <laughs> he, he uh, the the inspector looks a little ner- around a little nervously. He says, "Were were you expecting someone?" Um, no. not really. Are you expecting someone? No, I'm not. This is a place of business. We should but it's probably not open, open up yet. soon. Well, he came like an hour early, right? How long? Have- yeah, you yeah, guys have been arguing for about like 15 minutes. But 15 minutes is too long to keep you away from my pancakes. <laughs> I can go upstairs and tell them that we're closed. Okay? I'm going upstairs, and I okay. go to the door. And I okay. say, we're closed. Uh, <sighs> when you when you open the do you, do you open the door to see who it is, or are you just yelling no, through the door? No, I just yell through the door, we're closed. Uh, Drovo says, brother, it's me. Oh. Do I recognize his voice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's 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 Drovo. Okay. So, all right. Then I say, okay, Drovo, come in, and I open the door for him. So Are Drovo you is there, and and uh, he's he's also with um, Ridley, mm-hmm. and uh, and with um, with uh, Huzzah Odell. Oh, okay. Drovo and Ridley and Huzzah. Okay. He says, "Remember, Musette said that uh, we should meet here in the morning." Uh, mm-hmm. to discuss oh. things later because you were busy. I need to get a planner. Uh, yes, yes, Drovo. Um, right now, we are actually... Do you know a Dexter Handy? And Hazas, um, Hazar looks at you sort of quizzically and he, he, he says, no, no, I don't. Who, who, is, who, is, who is Dexter Handy? Okay, off the record, when I... Last episode, I... I made some sort of check to know if I knew Dexter Handy and you yeah, told me that I yeah, knew. Yeah, and you, di- you didn't. I didn't. Which was a little strange because... But that I've heard of the, the department that he's supposed to yeah, be from. Yeah, well, as a Uretimek, you're pretty familiar with most of them because they, they harass you, your your people. Yeah, what was the name of his, like, department or whatever? Uh, they, well, they're just, they're, they're just, in, they're just investigators. It's sort of a loose, loose governmental body they seem to have a lot of a lot of uh, wiggle room to do whatever they want okay do they work for the the government of the second dominion yeah of, of his order x of his order x okay yeah so mainly just the city so brother this is this guy dexter handy he apparently is one of his order x's investigators and he saw what happened uh on the event that was televised and he's here asking us questions because apparently that rat Cassius, uh, he says Cassius gave him a report about the activities of Jericho squad after he left the squad. So he knows who we are and he knows what we do here. And now he's asking all sorts of questions. Ridley says, I know all the investigators and I've never heard of Dexter Handy. Oh shit, it's going down. <laughs> Okay. I'm like, that's very interesting. Um, Man, it sucks being right all the time. <laughs> Told you that guy was a jerk. He is <laughs> grilling us on how to get to Cassius Breyer and bring him back here so he can be put on trial and assist him in like finishing the uh, the Aboriginal children. I I knew there was something wrong about that guy. You guys. That, that it- and she says she interrupts you and she says that that is something that we wanted to discuss with you today but i didn't send any investigators okay guys you got to brace yourselves because he's downstairs and i honestly am getting bad vibes from this guy okay so so do you guys want to go downstairs and we can all have a chat about who he really is or do you want to stay um, up here as as uh, so we're gonna we're gonna switch to down to the people who are downstairs right now, um, and uh, and Cassius I mean not Cassius I'm sorry and uh, Dexter says 
why is this taking so long? Who who is upstairs? I don't know. Yeah, I how feel like we know? I we feel like I've door. walked into some kind of a trap here. Oh man, it sucks, doesn't it? Hmm. But also, as sarcastically what, as what possible. tells you, since you keep accusing us of being terrible liars, what tells you that we're able to keep up if this was a trap? Are we bad liars or not? Ooh, damn. Uh, well, so far I know that uh, Cherdovir is a bad liar. And mm. and sometimes Jonathan lies to me. Uh, he tells bald face obvious lies just to be a jerk. Um that's that's the that's what i've seen so far uh zoe seems to like saying cryptic fifth dominion idioms oh, but, uh, <laughs> haven't figured out much have you investigator yeah uh i think i've got enough i'm going to be going now and he, oh you're not gonna stay for pancakes he, he says no no i i'll be fine and he, he gets up and walks up the stairs and he sees uh, and and, uh, and Cherdovir when, when he sees Ridley and Huzzah he just kind of pushes past them and goes out the door without saying anything and, um, and uh, Huzzah says was, was that him? Yes uh, can I actually like hold on to touch him in the arm and say wait a minute Mr. Handy yeah, yeah. Uh, make a grapple check. A grapple check? Where do I do yeah, that? Yeah, so basically you you just make a strength check. Or oh, you strength can do check. athletic. I'm sorry, you can do athletics. Athletics. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, if you guys uh, are eating those pancakes. I got a seven. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he uh, he got a um, 21. So he... He kind of slipped out of your out of your grip and and just kept on walking without even making eye contact with you. Okay, can I follow him and 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 yell at him? Hey, can you come back here, please? Uh, he you you start following him down the stairs down the street. Sorry, but uh, mm-hmm. he's he's walking at a really brisk pace and he's not looking back at you. Oh shit! It's going down. <laughs> Oh, It'd be really nice if the guy that knew how to fly and follow people knew that he was running away. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> they they asked you to, to let the people in and you said no. What? What was that? Jonathan uh, said it would have been nice if he had gone upstairs. Yeah, okay. I was yeah, I was metagaming. Don't don't mind <laughs> okay. me. Can I can I um I'm just eating well, pancakes all I'll be them. honest here. If he starts running away and he doesn't listen to what I'm saying, I, I wanna cast mage armor and and uh you know let's see, cast mage armor and what can I do? Um Oh shoot. Um let's see, mage armor. I'm casting mage armor. Okay. Okay. And I'm also casting um Maximilian's Earthen Grasp on. Um... Ooh, excellent choice. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Yeah, I, I mean, and at this point, he's only about twenty feet in front of you, so I, I imagine that's within the range of Maximilian's <laughs> Earthen Grasp. Well, can yeah, you, it what says. Is, what? Yeah. What does that spell do? Okay. This says, this says range area is thirty feet or f- thirty feet slash five okay. feet, and says concentration up to one minute, uh, attack save strength fourteen. You choose a five-foot square and occupied space on the ground that you can see within range. Medium hand made from compacted soil rises there and reaches for the one creature you can see within five feet of it. The target must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 2d6 bludgeoning damage and is restrained for the spell's duration. Okay. Um, what, so on, if he, what happens if he passes? Um... I don't know. I guess he doesn't get doesn't get grabbed. Yeah, I guess he doesn't get grabbed. So he he manages to pull pull himself out and uh, and disappears around a corner. What? No way. Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay. I yell back. uh, I yell back into the staircase like, Jonathan, I need you. Oh, well, so you're 20 feet outside of the store. Yeah. uh, And Jonathan is downstairs. So okay, well, I'm not going to follow him by myself. I think I run back into the store 
And okay. I try to I try to get to the people and said, this guy's running away. I don't think he's for real. So I go down the stairs and I, I talk to Jonathan. I say, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, we need you. He's running away. All right. I'm going to with the last pancake from the top of the table dangling from my beak. Like, this is why you don't talk to the cops. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and okay. with the, you know, still choking down the la last pancake, I'm, I'll take off flying. Okay. And right when I get to the door, turn and cast invisibility on myself and yeah. then just okay. fly high and see if I can find him. I just tell you, okay, no, okay. F no funny business. Just tail him. So you can either pick uh, investigation or, or uh, perception, either one. Jonathan, right? <sighs> yeah. Come on, seagull eyes. Oh, not bad. 22 percent. Wait, yep, 22 perception. Oh, man. Yeah, um, you thought you saw him out of the corner of your eye for a second, but uh, he's gone. You can't what? find it. Hmm. Hmm. That's bad. Oh, wow. What do you do, Jonathan? Thank you. I guess just like, yeah, gotta come back. Unless I, I can keep got, looking. I just got brought waffles. I'm, I'm mm. uh, method acting. Yeah. <laughs> you should, should have gotten pancakes. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Waffles are better. Yeah. <laughs> you got to cover yourself in fur the next time so you can yeah. play Bentley. I Get think they came out coat. pretty good. I'll, I'll just head back and did, hop down. It's like, I didn't find him, but I. Oh, did you lose him? Oh, man, that sucks. Are you and back I downstairs or are you still upstairs? I'm back downstairs, but I'm still invisible because I'm inconsiderate. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm I'm just a disembodied bird voice. Okay. Um, so I turned to Huzzah and I said, looks like we lost him. I don't know who he was. We're going to have to well, keep an eye out for him. There's no investigator named Dexter Handy. And second, I don't recognize that man. I don't know. I, I have never seen him before. It's not and I like know most I of gave the, him Most of the higher ups in the and the business owners, and I, I know most everybody. I make it my business to know everybody in, in the Second Dominion, everybody who runs businesses or are uh, important heads of organizations and things like that. I make the face that George Bush did when he heard about 9-11, and I kind of go like, that's very interesting. I guess we'll have to keep an eye out for this guy. When he was reading the children's story? Yeah. My pet goat, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to talk. Well, that. No, okay, never mind. Uh, can we um, can we go talk downstairs and have some breakfast? Sure, huzzah. I uh, thought they were down. I thought y'all were downstairs. Okay, sorry. No, oh. they're still upstairs. Okay. Jonathan is the only person who actually went back downstairs. The three of y'all are still upstairs. I guess is that so. correct. Okay, sorry, I yes. misunderstood. Thank you. No, I, I, mean, I got distracted by waffles, so. I mean, when I yelled to Jonathan, he's getting away, you guys all stayed downstairs? Just, you know? Yeah, I stayed okay. downstairs. Okay. okay. Sorry. So Ridley and Drovo and uh, Huzzah, I'll take a seat at the table. I'll put Huzzah over here. Yeah, I'll just stand and let my brother take my place. And Huzzah is the only one here that hasn't seen this place before. She says, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, and, and Ridley says, <clears throat> before we begin, I just want to say, uh, I want to thank you, Churdovir. And I know that it was kind of a blunder to tell, uh, to tell Huzzah about Jericho Squad, but it's something I've been petitioning, uh, I've been petitioning to do since, since, uh, since I took this position. I think That's Huzzah fine. is very trustworthy. She's a, she's a great person and, and she understands, uh, she has a good, she would have a, I felt she would have a good understanding of what we're doing and would be a great ally. Uh, mm -hmm. But they, every, time and time again, they told me no. Uh, they said they didn't want anyone in the Second Dominion knowing about what we were doing other than members of Jericho. Mm -hmm. Now you forced their hand. 
And uh, so officially, I'm supposed to say uh, that was a bad move. But personally, it was a great relief. I understand. So uh, Ridley and Huzzah, what do you want to talk about? Well, Huzzah says, well, I wanted to see this place. I wanted to, um, and Ridley kind of filled me in about your mission here and her mission. And and uh, it's more about uh, safeguarding the Fifth Dominion from threats. Mm -hmm. But uh, it seems that since we have vested members like yourselves that aren't from the Fifth Dominion, that you also watch out for the safety of of the other Dominions, too. Mm -hmm. uh, That's uh, correct. And, and we saw that happening at the debate. I mean, I, obviously, I saw it firsthand. So that's good. I mean, I, I think that I don't need to know about all of your dealings in other dominions and all of that stuff. But uh, but uh, I just I'm here to kind of see this for myself and, and get a little bit of reassurance about what you do and and that uh, it, it it's not anything to do with the fifth dominion wanting to uh, take control of of the other dominions. Sure. If you well, had I appreciate any, that. Any inklings or or ideas that uh, that you're here to manipulate the political process? Well, we were trying to preserve the political process uh, and what just happened. But uh, I mean, let me just it, uh, you haven't been acquainted with the rest of the team, have you? Not really. OK, so over there is Zoe. She's from the Fifth Dominion. Yeah. Hello. Hazan, Ridley, you know, of course, and I drove with my brother. We've been in adventures together. Yeah. Um, that blue-skinned lady is Musette. She a seer kind. You're a seer kind, right, Musette? Mm -hmm. We yep. we met briefly, yep. and yeah. you know, to be honest with you, I don't know what seer kind means. It's I it's from. So, I, I grew up here, but uh, my parents in a manner of speaking are from the fifth dominion so you mm -hmm. you you could understand i have a little bit of familiarity with the sure with the fifth dominion, sure but i don't know what i don't know what the um yeah what seer kind are uh we have ralph uh he was the lizard skin guy with a big hand on his back he's not here right now um and we have the the bird who's somewhere around here i can't see him right now uh he's called jonathan and everybody's so while everybody's discuss discussing this stuff, I am still invisible. Mm. Um, and I'm going to be rolling sleight of beak checks to like steal bites off people's plates when they're not looking. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, roll, roll a sleight of beak. Oh, man, I'm so full. And you can <laughs> and, and roll stealth. 25. With and roll stealth with advantage. Oh, my God. 25. And stealth is 22. Okay. Um, anybody that wants to can... Uh, well, what's everybody's passive perception? Passive perception. It's just Un pancakes. Unless you're actively looking for Jonathan. Uh, 16. It's 12 for me. It seems oh. like... Chodavir looks down and he doesn't have pancakes left, like mid Yeah, it, it, it seems like you, you don't remember eating this many, eating your pancakes this fast, but you must have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, mine's only I just, 14. I kind of shrug my shoulders okay. and go like, okay. I think I'm pretty done, though. I've been eating I'm pancakes. I'm like hunched over like, mine. <laughs> okay. All session. Yeah. Your rhythmics don't need to eat a lot either, so. She says, um, so I, I have one question. Um, where is Cassius Breyer? Cassius Breyer is in hell. Not this again. I know, right? We literally <laughs> just went through this whole thing. Yeah. He's Cassius Breyer, he's in hell. Yes. He's in hell. I, I, I always thought hell wasn't a real place. Well, there's a lot of mythology about it, I guess, from the First Dominion, but uh, trust me, it is a real place. Yes, enough belief, enough people believed in it. Hmm. Good point. 
Wait, that's how this works? Like, so if I believe of a waffle dimension and get enough people believing in a waffle dimension, there's a waffle dimension? This disembodied yeah, voice is from standing on the table says dimension, that. Though. How many people? I don't know. Maybe you guys, what are we doing with our lives? Are you going to try to think of a trash dimension? Well, is, is yeah, Jonathan, I just started a waffle trash cult. Is Jonathan visible now? No, I'm just talking invisibly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just this. Yeah, I got like, like from, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the bird. People's elbows. But we've that's spent enough time with Jonathan that this shouldn't be surprising. And yeah. you're just kind of going with it. Because if we spend too much time worrying about it, then we'll never get anything done. Right. Yeah. Concur. Well, it, if hell's a real place and you sent him there, I don't imagine there's much we can do about it. I mean, there's not much I want to do about it, but uh, I, I pull Drovo aside and I say, brother, can I speak with you for a minute? Of course. So I pull him aside and I say, look, Drovo. Um, Are you saying this in a way that nobody else can hear? Yes. Do you want me to whisper? Okay. okay. ASMR RPG. Take Drovo. <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, when I threw him in the portal, I think there's a way for us to communicate with him. <laughs> I am not sure what his state is now, now, but we can do that weird, you know, psychic cell phone thing with this guy. So if we have a picture of Cassius Breyer, we can ask him questions in hell. <laughs> he's in. The, he's eating a pancake. Okay. This is, um, <clears throat> well brother that's um that's very interesting i suppose we could do that uh it would be good to see what's uh what's behind this this aboriginal children movement and his need to uh he needed to take that position so badly that uh when he saw that he was losing he tried to overthrow the government right right so I'm not sure if we're going to get anything out of him or if we're just going to be hearing constant screaming, but uh, we can do that. Do you think we should offer this option to Huzzah and Ridley? Uh, it's worth a shot, I suppose. Oh, I don't know oh, very much okay. about uh, the place that you sent him, Hell. I don't know much about Hell. It's supposed to be a place of torment full of demons, so... <laughs> That sounds I, like the, the Innovo. Yeah, it's kind of like an Innovo, I would s probably. I mean, from what I saw, it looked pretty grim. Um, yes, I think that's a good analogy, brother. I mean, honestly, I he tried, he tried to kill you. He kidnapped you, tried to kill you. He tried to kill all of us. So I had no mercy. You know us, Erethemex. We're, you know, vengeance is in our blood, right? He survived for 200 years in the Innovo. Well, I guess we can find out whether he's surviving in hell. He seems like the if anyone could do it, it seems like he would be the one. Okay. This would be a good way for us to be able to contact him and ask any questions Huzzah might want to talk to him about without actually having him transported back here, because honestly, yeah. I don't want him back. He says, well, I guess if you want to do it now, go ahead and get his uh, his picture. Okay, I'll get his picture. I uh, grab his picture. You, you grab where his pictures used to be, but uh, they've been taken by Ralph to the Fifth Dominion. Ah. Uh, Field trip. Wait. Great. Um, I was like, oh, yeah, there's there's that. Um, One second. Better hope those tiles are still there. Yeah. So apparently we don't have a picture of him. Hey, Bentley, you have a cell phone, right? Uh, I, I, I don't I don't have a cell phone. OK, I just have I have one of the stones. OK. Do you happen to have any 
picture we could use to contact Cassius Breyer. I believe you called him once on a phone, didn't you? But wasn't you don't have any pictures of him there? Well, Ralph has the pictures, so and it's I, probably I, could, I know him well enough. I could I I can picture him in my head. Do you think you could try reaching him through the Jericho Squad psychic link? Uh oh. Boy, that's a that's quite a uh, that's quite a request for my breakfast time. You know, I he was supposed to be my friend. He betrayed me. I took shots at him, and then I ended up face down in the river. Yeah, it's just because if we could talk to him, that way, whatever they want to talk to Cassius about, we wouldn't have to bring him physically back into our dimension. I mean, assuming he even wants to talk to us, assuming he can yeah. talk. You know, I, I would kind of rather that one of you did it because Okay. I don't want to talk to him. And also, you're the ones who know what kind of questions you want to ask. Okay. Um, so, I, okay. So I turn to Huzzah and I say, uh, Huzzah, there might be a way that we can contact Cassius in help. But we can't do it right now. Uh, do you think that would be useful? Well, you know, and I, I just learned that hell exists about five minutes ago. Uh, think of it sure, as kind of a you know. Inoval, you know. Think of it as kind of like yeah. the Inoval. I don't know if you've ever been to the Inoval, but think of it as yeah. as a dimension like that. I, I've so been, I'm gonna uh, pop up to Musette's shoulder quickly and just say, hey, why don't you come with me? Let's go get those plates. And if she's willing, we'll just go to the alley where we left the tiles and get them while you guys are talking. <laughs> I just noticed Rob's putting the plates of waffles onto the... Uh, onto well, yeah, and I've been stealing oh, all great. of them. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is not me saying anything in the group, but it's like we we did hide the tiles in an alley, right? Like a yeah, a we're, couple of we're just gonna yards. go get them while you're talking with your oh, brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can totally okay. do that. I just yeah. can't carry them myself. But right, I know right. Where they are. So, who's going to get the tiles? I was gonna ask Musette, but what did Musette didn't go with you the first time? No, but I know where they are. Okay, make an intelligence check to remember where they're at. Okay. I mean, I hit. Wasn't them that just like last night? That they walks that? over, yeah. 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 Four. Four total. Yeah. Okay. Oh no. Well, you you uh, <laughs> you thought you remembered where you put them, but these alleys are all starting to look kind of the same. I mean, I am an urchin, so yeah, I'm good at city what, navigation. What what does that do for you? Uh, it just means I take half the time to move through cities. Oh, okay. Because I know cities. Um, I was you you realize that you had Chertovir with you, and it probably would be a good idea to go back and get him. Yeah, but he won't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, you you head back. So so Jonathan, you you uh, you were looking for Chertovir, and he emerged from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hey, you should go get those tiles. Okay. Uh, you want me to go with you, or do you want me to grab them? Myself? Nah, you got it. Okay, I'll uh, I'll go grab those tiles. That's a good idea. We could probably get the 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 photo from uh, Ralph. Okay, so I'll be right back. So I go up the stairs and I go out the street and I walk down two blocks. Uh, do I need to do any sort of checks? Yeah, make an intelligence yes. check to, to remember where you put them. <laughs> Seven you, intelligence you, you, check. You, yeah, I'm you using. could swear that you knew where you put them, but oh no! Now these alleys are all sort of started of, starting to look the same. Oh and man! And you've, wa you've walked around in circles a few times, and it's uh, it's getting more and more frustrating trying to remember where these where you left these things. Can I try to investigate an alley to my left and see if it's in there? Uh, yeah, make an investigation check. No, there's no way to get these tiles back. We hid two hours ago. <laughs> you, you... Okay, I, I I have a feeling that it was in this alley, and I'm going to investigate underneath some rubble. 
Okay. 19. Oh. Oh, thank God. I mean, thank uh, Uma Uma Gamagi because you you yeah. you you found them. I found them. You were, okay. You were starting to worry there. I look around just to see if nobody's like looking and I retrieve the tiles. Okay. And it seems like nobody's around actually. It's pretty early in the morning. There's a few people walking by minding their it's business. It's like 11. <laughs> you, you remember how heavy they were and you kind of wish you had a wheelbarrow, but uh are they really that 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 heavy? How many well, tiles you, are we talking yeah, have about? Have you ever carried twenty tiles? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I kind of make an effort to like you know put them underneath my you know cloak and okay. walk back. Okay. Uh, eventually, you make it back with the tile. <laughs> okay. Good. And uh, while that was going on, did any were there any conversations? Anything that happened uh, downstairs? Anybody have anything to say to Huzzah or Ridley? Or, uh... Everybody's just standing around Bentley. awkwardly? Just eating their waffles? I thought Jonathan ate all the waffles. Uh, I Bentley, know. I will go help you take care of the dirty dishes. Oh, well, that's appreciated. Okay, so we're gonna go and take care of the dishes. He says, you know, Musette, I think that you're very hard on, on Bustle and Pancake. They want to uh, they want to redeem themselves, you know. No, it's fine. I'm, yeah, I'd rather not. I think you're too nice to them. Uh, well, they've done a good job. I mean, look at all this stuff they procured upstairs. They took all of our movies. That yeah, well, procured. you know, those movies were always meant to be for sale. But how are we supposed to learn about the Fifth Dominion and their practices? Well, I could ask you. I guess you could, yeah. <laughs> but movies are more fun. Yeah. Well, one thing I've learned is that things aren't exactly always like the movies. Ah, I don't believe that. Am I back in the... Yeah, yeah. So at this point, uh, at this point, sure to be here. Brink carefully brings the tiles down the steps. Okay. It's it's 20 tiles. I mean, I'm a six foot tall like a uh, yeah. I can do it. Um, okay, so I, I, I come downstairs. All right, so I come over here to the table and I tell everybody, okay, guys, let's do this. I, I start, I, I say, come on, let's lift the table out of here. Let's put the tiles on so we can, uh, we can get back to, uh, we can, can get Rolf back in here. Okay. 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 We hear a commotion. Okay, I guess uh Chodavir's back. All right, guys, let's uh let's let's put the tiles back together so we can uh you know, one of us can go back and, and get Ralph back and we can uh see if we can make some sense of this stuff. Is Bentley coming? Yeah. He'll come and he'll help move the table off of the uh, the express. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I see the tiles underneath. That's cool, man. That is really cool. So can we move the table to the kitchen or something? Uh, what you've done in the past, because it's so huge, is just kind of stand it up on end against the okay. wall. Got it. Yeah. You guys right. doing a great job. If I had thumbs, I'd help. <laughs> is he still I've invisible? Seen you, I've seen you pick things up with your mind, man. <laughs> Don't you have a mage hand, dude? I'm gonna hold up the wings, no thumbs. It seems you, like I, you only have no thumbs when it's convenient. That does seem pretty convenient, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Is I he visible? Up everybody's leftovers. Is he visible yet? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'll slide oh, in. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. actually, you turned, was, you turned he said visible he was and stood on somebody's shoulder. Okay. A little bit ago. Yeah, before yeah. I went out and got the okay. tiles. You you committed the tile um, or pattern to memory. To, to memory for the... Right. Um, so make an intelligence check to recall the tile positioning for uh, for the, the Liverpool... Uh, Jericho base. I'm pretty sure we declared directly, or at least I did, that we wrote it down. Didn't just remember it. The last thing I didn't heard we? was that Churduvir committed it to memory because he didn't want to have it on him. 
Okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me do an intelligence check. Good luck. Oh my god. I got a one plus three equals four. Oh, All right, so, we are so too stupid one. to D&D. Oh. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, boy. It, it seemed like it was really easy uh, when you did it a, f a couple hours ago, but now... <clears throat> oh. There's a, there's a group of three tiles that you just cannot remember which order they go in. And it seemed okay. like it was one way, but, oh, crap, maybe that was, maybe that was for Midian and not for Liverpool. Um, can I try combinations and see if that works? Uh, Bentley says, hey, why, uh, let, let me help. Um, so you can roll one more time. So now you're rolling with advantage because Bentley is trying to help you. Okay. So I'm rolling for intelligence once. Yeah. I got a 19. Okay. Yeah. So with a 19 and with Bentley's help, you got the, the remaining few tiles into the right position. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Okay, um, so yeah, you're set up uh, to receive from Liverpool. Uh, I'm assuming that's what you were trying to do, right? So that uh, so that Ralph could come back. Yes, yeah. Okay. How do we so tell him to come back? Uh, you, well, you guys know him well enough that you can just look into your, your um, stone you know, yeah. for some people, it's a cell phone case. For others, it's just a it's just a, a magical stone with a rune on it. Okay. Okay. Um, but you can look into that and picture him in your mind and and communicate with him. Oh, cool, cool. Okay. So, anybody wants to do that for Ralph? Anybody wants to call Ralph <laughs> and tell him to come back? Anyone? I don't have a phone. I got nowhere to put it. You, you, you well, you, you, you do have Bueller. one in your, <laughs> yeah, you have one in Bueller. your room if you want it. It's not a phone. It's just yours is just a, a stone. A oh, stone. I didn't know I had one of those or yeah. how to use it. I can do it. I mean, I'm just giving someone else a chance to do it. No, nope, call him. Let's just okay. call him back. Okay. I, uh, I grab my, my, uh, rune and I go like, um, you know, uh, Hey, Ralph, are you there? Ralph, it's safe now. You can come back. Okay, so, Ralph, you uh, you hear Chertovir's voice in your head. What what were you up to at this point over in the, in, in Liverpool? Nothing nothing dirty, I guess. Hello? Hey. Hey, Ralph. Hey, hey look. Uh, the coast is clear. Yeah. The coast is clear, and we can uh, get you back here anytime you want to come back with the stuff. Uh, or if you just want to bring, if it's more convenient to just bring the photo book of the Jericho Squad photos, uh, we just need that one right now. If, it's up to you. If you can bring back the whole stuff, that'd be great. Okay. Well, how did I get over there? Uh, we got the we got the rocks of the pattern, the tiles set to receive. So just go to the transport there in Liverpool, and uh, you know. And, and uh, Ald Aldrin has already said it to send. She's been waiting, just waiting for the signal. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well okay then. <laughs> Grab guess. the stuff. We got waffles, I think. I don't okay. know if Jonathan ate all of them. Well, his stomach isn't that big. All right. Well, then I, I guess already cleaned up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So you, so Aldrin takes you over, and and uh, she, w the rest of her crew is willing to help you haul that stuff over there. Well, I guess just, I'm at the portal thingy then. You, you just need to be hanging on to it uh, for the trip back. So you you stand on the on the tile. Uh, you imagine yourself uh, back to um, back to the second dominion. Uh, make a charisma saving throw. Uh, Fifteen. Oh, that's that's great. Yep. So you uh, fifteen plus three. Wow. So eighteen. Yeah. Your body, your body, and and your belongings briefly sort of turn into a glyph of yourself, which is like the mental, your mental projection of yourself, and you transport through the Innovo uh, without incident, and you reappear in back in the uh, in the fifth dominion, in the second dominion, in the in the shop. 
you see uh, your familiar friends and you also see Ridley and Huzzah, which is a kind of a surprise, and uh, and Drovo. So what I miss, everyone? Is it <laughs> worth it? Yeah, he wasn't a cop. Wow. So that was a lot of unnecessary stress. Yeah, it like looks a, more looks like, not quite enough stress, depending on who he actually is. Yeah, which we still haven't bothered to even talk about, but I guess it's not important. It'll roll back around. Ben, so says, what do you mean? He, what do you mean he wasn't the cop? Oh right, you weren't upstairs. Uh, okay, so Hazad doesn't recognize him as an investigator, and there is no investigator to her knowledge that is called extra handy. So he he just uh, when he when he ran upstairs, he just ran out the door. And that's why I had like Jonathan try to follow him, but you know, he just he got away. I tried grabbing him with the Maximilian's Earth and Grasp spell, but apparently he must have a lot of magic or strength because he just uh, I couldn't grab him. He just slipped through it and ran away. But we, yeah, we so let he's... this guy in our and see this is Codevere's tell that he just tells everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But well, I'm telling that to, to Bentley. To no, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, but we know this. <laughs> well, you weren't And upstairs. Zoe can back me up on this. This Bentley is the Fifth upstairs. Dominion lesson. Never talk to the police. Okay. We of the Fifth Dominion know that, right? Zoe, okay. don't right. ever talk to the police. Right. If you guys are going to adopt Fifth Dominion customs, you got, you know. Especially if they're not police. Well, especially well, if they're not police. <laughs> Well, and I forgot. Beard we should have had probably room. more run-ins with these investigators than anybody, and and that might have contributed to what made him so nervous around them in the first place. Zoe, I was particularly fond of the way you told him to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I she it wasn't was lying. <laughs> I wasn't she, lying. He asked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So I, I would just like an apology for everybody. Uh, don't push your luck, okay? I was don't... absolutely right in shitting on that guy. You could have just tailed him and found out where he was going. Instead, you just got yourself into, you know, more conspicuous. I, think... I was spot. I, you know, he made me. What was I supposed to do? Well, I think you, you owe you, you owe yourself an apology. He owe, he was uh, he was ready to kill you. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> like that's outside of the ordinary for me. Okay, that's besides <laughs> the point. So. Jonathan, you didn't see where he went to last night. No, no, he's a sneaky. He's a sneaky guy. Okay. He's good. Okay, and, so and I didn't just flub it. Like he's okay. good. Yeah. So that's yeah. something to worry about. I have no idea what's going. He's on. weaselly uh, for sure. So, uh, Ralph, well, welcome back, Ralph. Do you yeah, have hi. Do you have the I, stuff? <laughs> yeah. Here's your shit. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so for sending ben, me Bentley over. starts no putting the computer back together on the uh, on the table over there. Yeah, the Did Xbox. you get any fish and chips while you were in Liverpool? No. I got oh. there and uh, they kind of locked me away so no one could see me. And I weaseled my way into a dumpster and I hung out there for a while. Did you get oh, us cool. a new v Did you get us a new VCR? I wasn't there for very long, I don't feel like. <laughs> I was in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there's I mean, a VCR. That explains the smell. <laughs> there was no VCR in the dumpster. You dumpster? What were you doing in a dumpster? <laughs> it was the buffet for me, man. Yeah, they're oh, like no. buffets in the Fifth Dominion. They all come in these really nice plastic bags. Except, you know, it's got a lot of styrofoam and other kind of trash you don't want to mess with. Uh, well, you... it's aged to perfection. You haven't you lived might you've had a go, fry. You might go to want to go and take a shower, but uh, for now, let me just grab onto this uh, picture book, and let me scroll and see if I can find. Uh, I look for the book in the photo book to see if I can find a photo or an image of Cassius Breyer. Okay, okay and I yeah, want to ask, and, and it's Chodavir. there. I mean, it's Sorry. it's it's the first picture. Uh, Bendley is second. He's first. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna ask Chodavir. Like, hold on a second. How do these uh, stone tablets really work? Like, can we? Do you know if we can cast spells through them? Like, do you have the knowledge of Arcana to know about how this works? Because uh, I don't. Yeah, but make if... an make an Arcana check. Who me? Yeah. Why would I was you? Trying, if you yeah. wanna, if you wanna answer his question, you don't have to. 
I mean, why would we send spells through the the stones? You mean because I can read his mind. Oh. <laughs> okay, let me check. <laughs> Arcana? Probably should have done that with the cop, but. Right, Arcana. Let's see. Uh, I have a plus six on Arcana. Let me uh, do a check. I got a ten. Okay. It seems like that would be more complicated uh, version of what you've got here. So it it may be possible, but uh, it's uh, it's it w- it would take a lot of thought, and you don't feel like you have time to deal with that right now. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we can. I don't think I know exactly how to do that, but we can contact him. So, you know, what do you guys think? Should we contact him? Uh, do you think it's a good idea? Anybody has any objections to that? Nope. I'd well, love to see where he is right now. Him, I'm still like kind of lost. Oh, so the reason we brought you back here is because, you know, we got Haza and Rod- Ridley here and uh, we were thinking about trying to contact Cassius Breyer in hell to see how he's doing there. Maybe get some information from him. Maybe and and at this point, uh, Bentley chips in and says, we also brought you back because you're a member of the team. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that. Who cares what, how Cassius Breyer is doing? Got that oh. right. Well, I turn to, I turn to uh, Huzzah and I say, uh, do you have anything in particular you want to ask Cassius about? I mean, let him burn. <laughs> How does he uh, eat his steaks now? <laughs> you know, maybe we should consider talking to... Is, is, is there literally anything else that we could talk to in that dimension? Because honestly, I don't care how he is. We, we just need to know... You know, if, we need to figure out if something's going on, like if he's planning an escape, because it's really suspicious that somebody wants to know where he is, yada, 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 mm. which, you know, you blabbed about. And um, so. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, so, uh, Jonathan or, or Jurdavir was the one who didn't tell him where he was. It was the set. Yeah, but but yeah. the tiles aren't there for them to to be able to go into hell. The tiles are with But uh, he's a he's a sneaky jerk. You know you know he's up to something. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should contact uh the paladin back in Africa and let her know that someone might try to make their way there. Uh that make would sure probably be wise, yeah. She secures a stone. Yeah, so I think that's our priority right now. Um I, yeah. I look for I look for her um a photo. What was her name again? Tressa okay. Young. Tressa Young. Okay. So I go like, hey, let's 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 warn Tressa. Um sorry, real fast. I thought that Tress I thought that they were done there. Or are they still t- stationed there? I think she's still there, right? I think she was still at the encampment. Um even though her entire squad died. Well, I can ask her. Giving her a break or anything. Yeah, I, she, I can she, ask her. Uh, and, and Ridley at this point speaks up and says she had requested a transfer and we were still um, we're still debating about how to handle this situation because we are afraid to leave it unguarded. Well, so, that, so that's even go. better because that means that the stone is with Tressa and it's not near Gregorius's hell anymore. So that makes it a little more secure, right? She requested it, but it hasn't been it hasn't been carried out. Oh, okay. Well, let me just call her. Let me just grab my rune stone and go like Why don't we just go there to head him off? Uh do you think I like that idea. Let's do that. You guys you guys want to go there? Okay. Yes. I mean we yeah. could do that. Yeah. I mean, we gotta go be heroes. And you know, my second favorite dumpster in the world was in Tunisia, you know. I mean, we're assuming that this well, guy, cool. whoever he was, has a way of getting to the Fifth Dominion um, and get to Africa. I uh, mean, and Bendley says, when were you planning on going there? I mean, I now? was planning on. Yeah, I was planning now. on talking to Tressa first, but uh, yeah, if you guys just want to go there right, and try to head him off. Okay. 
Tressa, are you there? It's uh, Chirov here from Squad 77. I'm here with uh, with all the team members and uh, also the uh, council members. Uh, we want to ask you something. Oh, good. It's you. Yeah. Uh, how have you been doing there? Are you still at the encampment? Yes, unfortunately. Listen, there is danger uh, probably coming your way. Someone is trying to release Cassius from hell. And um, as you know, the only way they could do that is if they opened a portal at the ninth circle uh, to go back into hell. So now more than ever, it's really important that you keep that the, the, that stone, that, that tile safe, because if they get a hold of that, um, his agents might be able to try to make a, their way to, uh, to hell and rescue Cassius. Oh, great. Well, I now I see why you didn't want it. Well, I wanted to offer you the chance to take that responsibility because it, it was your squad. And uh, I wanted to prove to you that I was not trying to take away any any power from you. And I, I wasn't trying to. Uh... But anyway, um... so you you made a deal with hell. You obviously sent Cassius there. Mm -hmm. And now his somebody wants to go retrieve him from hell and they're going to go through me. Well, I'm here by myself uh, to get him. Is that is that what you're because you gave me the stone? Is that what oh. I'm hearing? Yeah, no. pretty much. No, what you're hearing is that I'm trying to get you secure and get that stone secured along with you so that if someone shows up there, they won't have access to it. I mean, okay, we can go there if you'd like. like. We should go there. Okay. Mm -hmm. As John well, you guys, you guys can't hear Tressa. Only, only. Yeah, but it sounds can. like they're arguing, and mm -hmm. that's really all we need to know is that they're arguing. Right. So I can say, okay. So if it's more, if it's better for you, if you don't want to come here to us, we can go there to you and be supportive and try to protect anybody from getting a hold of attacking you or getting a hold of the stone does that sound like a fair trade so you're coming here to do are you going to take the stone no i will protect the stone from being taken if someone else goes there and tries to attack you you just you just said you were by yourself right so you can you have two choices you can either come over here to us and we can you know keep the keep you protected or we can go there and be a protective force in case someone does try to go there and retrieve the stone to release Cassius Breyer. What do you want to do? Well, I'm, uh, I I don't I don't know if I can leave. Uh, I'm the only one here. That uh, settles it then. Are you comfortable with us going there, taking the team over there? And uh, when would you be coming here? Uh, probably today. At this point, Bentley sort of speaks up and he goes, you know, uh, some dubious person knows about our location and you're talking about leaving me here by myself. It's a fair point. You can come with. So, guys, do you want to split the team and maybe nope. some of it? Okay. Hard no. <laughs> okay. Well... <laughs> We are also compromised here, Tressa. So someone actually was in our headquarters and they claimed that Cassius Breyer told them about Jericho Squad, told them everything about our headquarters. And it turns out that he was an undercover agent, uh, we suspect, for Cassius Breyer. So they know where our headquarters are. So we can't afford to leave our headquarters uh, unprotected at the moment. Would you mind if one of us went there and got the stone from you? Uh, no, I think that would be prudent. Okay. Let me, um, let me go there. Can we, can we arrange for me to go there? Yes, I don't think yes. she likes you. She likes me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was getting that impression. Okay, how about one of us? Uh, was, okay. Sorry, I was going to say, but Ryan was trying to point out that we can't we can't hear Tressa's side of the conversation. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah. I'm I'm waiting for Tressa to say, if you if you don't want me to go there, uh, we can send someone else from the team there. What would you prefer? How, uh, how about Zoe? Okay, that's fair. Let me ask Zoe. Zoe, would you be willing to um, to go to Tressa and get the stone from her so we could keep that safe? Of course. I'll go to Tunisia. I'll go. You want to go too? Okay, I'll Jonathan. I'll go too. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Awesome. So, Tressa, we're sending the bird and Zoe to meet you. Okay. I will. Um, I'll have this the the transport arranged. Thank you. Um, it, it'll be just give me ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. Um, please let me know when it's ready. Okay. Right, and please. I want you to know, I I also am concerned about your well being. So, um, I will. Has a side note. Yeah, I, I think it would be prudent for you to, to hide there um, and keep an eye out in case someone shows up at the encampment, okay? All right. Uh, you mean you mean hide and don't engage if someone well, shows up? here's the thing. This agent, whoever he was, claiming to be an investigator, he said he wanted to bring Cassius Breyer to justice, and he, he, he was more than willing to show up with a force to take him from hell so that he could be uh, brought to justice. But now it seems like he's he was really just one of his agents. And apparently um, they do have a, a powerful force that could try to attack Gregorius's folly and retrieve Cassius. I mean, they actually, Musette told them, <laughs> Musette told them that there was a way for them to achieve um, entrance to hell through Tunisia's, you know, folly. So unfortunately, that place is now compromised. So we can expect someone to show up there with a large force. Sorry about that. Well, you're talking about Cassius Breyer. When when we're talking about a former agent of Jericho, doesn't that make all of our bases compromised? That's a fair point. I mean, I, I bet I'm new at this. I don't know exactly what he knew about all the Jericho squads. I mean, who knows what information he amassed? Well, uh, he's he's been here. Yeah, so he will know exactly where that is, but he can't unless he left that information for his um, minions. Uh, How did you safe. find out that this person, this investigator, was really a minion of? Well, of because Cassius. he claimed to be an investigator, and I do have council members here right now, and they said that they did not know the name that he used, and when he escaped. Uh, they did not recognize him as an investigator. And it seemed like he left in a real hurry, so he was definitely escaping from us when um, I didn't trust him either. I mean, I, he was very interested in bringing Cassius Breyer to justice, air quotes. So I think he was really trying to find a way to go in and rescue him. So I'm pretty sure he was one of his minions. Wow. What a mess, huh? Yeah. Look, I, um, I I want to apologize for getting you investigated. I think that um, probably under the circumstances, you were stressed out and trying to do the best you could. Uh, you, but You uh, had me investigated? Well, yes. I mean, Ridley came and talked to you. Right, right. Yes, that's true. Yeah. I remember that after the, the combat. Sorry, it's been a day and I kind of forgot about that. It's okay. I mean, hey, it's all about information, right? We're we're all part of the same network, so I understand that. Uh, anyway, I'll I'll set up the, the the transport, and I'll be waiting for you. Um, it'll be ready in ten minutes. Thank you, Tressa. We'll send Zoe and Jonathan. Okay. J John, the bird. Yeah, the bird wants to come along too. All right. Well, I suppose he's better than the than the squally. Just uh, make sure you lock up your food items, okay? Your provisions. All right. Uh, I think I can do that in 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Tressa. All right. All right. So, so we, um, yeah. That's, we need uh, to seems... set up the, yeah. 
So I, I, I turn back and I tell them, uh, the rest of the team, what, uh, what we were talking about. Do you want me to actually say it? No. Uh, yeah. No. no. no, that's no. Fine. Yeah. No. We got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't. We don't want a rerun of the uh, double uh, interrogation with the exact same lines again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I imagine at this point you're setting up the uh, the transport to go to the Tunisian um, Tunisian headquarters. Dumpster. I mean. Right on. Temple. I see that uh, Ralph was just making its way onto the transporter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was telling about the dumpster. Like yeah. the first time we went to Tunisia, I told everybody about it. The second best dumpster I'd ever met. It's right behind that falafel shop. Ralph, trust me. <laughs> if you like dumpsters, I do. The, yeah, this is a good one. This is the best, second best one I ever found in my travels. Well, Jonathan, try not to get stranded there. Try not to get yourself lost. You're just there to go with Zoe to pick up that stone, okay? I'm never lost. I just don't always know where I am. That's the whole definition of loss. <laughs> okay, so you guys get yourselves onto the transport. Um, and uh, whoever has the highest charisma, which is pr probably Jonathan. Probably. Because uh, he's a sorcerer. That's his main stat. Yep. You'd never okay. guess it, but... Y you, If you're... Uh, if you're sort of holding hands or hand and wing or whatever, you can roll with advantage on your charisma saving throw. All right. Is it a saving throw or a check? Saving throw. Okay. Even better. 24. Oh, yeah. You uh, you make it through expeditiously. Uh, and you arrive in the... Uh, and, and you realize that it's really hot compared to where you just came from. Uh, but you, uh, your body congeals around your your glyph of yourself, and now you're 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 back from the Innovo into the uh, into the Fifth Dominion in the Tunisian desert. Oh man, there's times I really wish I could sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is like a thousand times hotter than what it feels like at the beach in California. Well, at least there's good thermals. But it's a dry heat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, Tressa was waiting for you there. She says, "She says, welcome Zoe and Jonathan." <laughs> Hi. It's so been so long. It's so great yes. to see you. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. This isn't under more pleasant circumstances. She says, "I think you're looking for this," and she hands you a, a flat stone with a rune on it. All right, I'll take it in my beak and immediately fall to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Just so, give yeah. it to me. I'll put it in my pocket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this thing has pockets. <laughs> I don't have pockets. Uh, my one big regret in life. Story of my life. <laughs> Your life? And I look down at my bird waist. <laughs> she says, well... Um, Churdovir said that I should hide. I mean, is do you do, do you agree? Is this am I in danger here? Personally, I think you should get transferred. You've done enough. Um, well, the the the, uh, the request is in. Yeah, yeah, we heard the request was in, but it hasn't been processed. If there's anything we can do, let us know. Um, I've been, uh, you know, I think I've been on hell duty long enough. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Um, we are suspecting somebody's coming, uh, but how you need it, choice. Um, we don't know. Basically, there's a lot we don't know about that interrogation, but we do know there's somebody not of the government or of Jericho Squad interested in Cassius Breyer, as always. So best of luck, anything we can do for you. But I think the best thing we can do right now is just get back through the portal with this stone. Okay. Get it out of your hair. Well, I, I do appreciate that. Um, and uh, good luck. I hope that you can resolve this without any further uh, infernal contracts. Yeah, I don't know if you guys want to take a break. Maybe you guys got like 20 minutes. Uh, want to look around, Zoe? Did Ra oh Ralph didn't come with? Okay, never mind. Yeah. I was gonna show Ralph the falafel dumpster. 
but he didn't come. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I'm full enough of pancakes. We'll okay. head straight back. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, make a make another. Uh, if you're doing the same way, make another charisma saving throw with advantage. Yeah, I'll demand Zoe pet me. I'm like, that's the only way it works. You gotta like <laughs> pet right here as we're going through. Oh dang. Um. Twenty-five. Whoa. See, I told you. Yeah, you you made it through. You're you're uh, you're in good shape. You gotta pet me for it to work. Yeah. Oh. Musette is the other one that I you can't can tell you how many times I've heard through. that. <laughs> God. Oh, that just made Jonathan more lonely. <laughs> he kind of did the half laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only talking bird. All right, and uh, and when you get back, you see uh, Huzzah and uh, and Ridley were were sort of standing up, and they look like they're getting ready to go. Uh, We've got some more uh, matters to attend to. We've got quite a mess to deal with. Um, and there is some, uh, of course, there's questions about whether Drovo's uh, election was fair. And so we have, there's investigations into that. He doesn't get automatically appointed just because his, uh, his opponent was uh, condemned to hell. Right? So... Um, there's a lot of politics mess. in the fifth dominion were messed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Well, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna head out, but, uh, thank you. Um, and, uh, and thanks for, for also, um, Lee pointing out this, uh, false investigator Dexter Handy. We're mm -hmm. um, we'll look into that. I'm I'm going to be talking to uh, to to, his, to that division, and they they head upstairs and uh, and go out. So Drovo and Ridley and Huzzah are uh, are gone. So I guess I'll kind of jointly ask Bentley and Chodavir because he knows about magical stuff. Um, is there any reason we can't just destroy this tile and permanently seal the entrance? <laughs> right? Because uh, don't you need all the tiles? So if we destroy this one, does that permanently close the portal to hell? Do I uh, do I have to do an arcana check to answer that question? Um, it's pretty. I, I I'd say that it's pretty. You're, it's pretty common knowledge for you uh, in your studies that magic items are very very difficult to destroy. Great. Where's the nearest volcano? So yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so I tell him, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, um, I don't know of any spell that can smash this. These things are actually magical, and as such, uh, it's very hard to destroy them. Um, I mean, you can try smashing them, but they'll just come back together again, and it's um, yeah, they're magical, you know. Well, what about that big old arithmetic? library you're always talking about well i've lived there do you think there's a way we you could figure out Most a of my means life. of destroying these or closing the portal i can try looking around the books and see if there is any way to at least render it useless if not destroyed um okay so yes i will go to the library <laughs> and i will take care of that i'll see what i can find okay bentley says do you want the car or the motorcycle um, I'll take the motorcycle. Okay. I, I need to learn how to drive that thing better, so I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. Okay, he gives you. The um, I guess call us when you need a skin graft. <laughs> or you got Zoe's number, right? I will, Bird. <laughs> I will. <laughs> try not to eat everybody's food. I, I just heard. I need to go learn how to drive this motorcycle better. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Uh, right. Well, Musette, Ralph, Zoe, maybe we can spread our fingers out and or brainstorm and try to figure out a way to maybe track down who this Dexter Handy actually is. 
Sounds interesting. Um, I really, at this point, don't have a better solution than literally flying around the areas where I kind of saw him before. I have no idea who this Dexter Handley guy is still, (laughs) but I will play with it. He was a jerk. Uh, Can I give a basic (laughs) description? But it's like a bird's description of a person, so I focus uh, on all the wrong things. Ralph met him the first time when he came in the evening, and then he came back again in the morning when Ralph was gone. Oh, yeah, it was that jerk off that came and wanted to poke around. Oh, yeah, that guy sucked. <laughs> Wait, so Dude, I he hit sucked from even him? more than we thought. <laughs> okay. So, so, um, um sure, Dovir, question, can you? Sorry. Um, Bentley, where is Bentley right now? He's downstairs. He's okay, still so he's cleaning up. The only people that left were Chudavir and. Was it just Chudavir? Bentley, since you want me to get along so well with Pancake and Bustle, do you think maybe they would have some insight? I will be willing to talk to them if they prove they are not useless jerks. Uh, They're still out looking for the cable for that thing that already had a cable. Yeah, but I don't think it'd be that hard to find them. So That's my idea. you, You want someone to go find them? No, I can go find them. Okay. And uh, Churdovir, can you you can either make an intelligence check with advantage or make a dexterity check for riding a motorcycle. Okay. I will do an intelligence check with advantage. Yeah, you have advantage because you did it once before. So you think you've got kind of a handle on it. Intelligence check. Eight. Eight. Let me try again. Four. I'll take eight. There's one time when you're dry, you start driving and you think, okay, this is not too bad. And a pack of gravelant rats runs in front of the uh, motorcycle. Uh-huh. And you think you're putting on the brakes, but you actually make the throttle go faster. Oh no. And uh, you, you crash the motorcycle into a, into a sign. Oh man. Okay. So, Do I take any uh, damage? Yeah, make a, make an acrobatics check to jump off of the motorcycle. All right, acrobatics check says 12. <laughs> you barely manage to jump off of it, and you do this kind of cool slide on your feet, and the motorcycle is uh, is tipped over. Heck yeah. Uh, is, uh, okay, so I don't take any damage? No. no I rush over uh, to the motorcycle and inspect it to see if it's still operable. Okay, yeah, make an investigation check. Okay. It looks like I got a 15 plus 6, 21. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was a very thorough investigation. The motorcycle, one of the handlebars seems a little bit bent, but uh, other than that, it's all right. So all you right. can get back on and, and uh, try again. Sure, I'll do that. Okay, so... Um, so at this point, you thought you had a good handle on it, but maybe you didn't. So uh, make a make an intelligence check now without advantage. Okay. I got a twelve. Okay. So you're a little bit unsteady at first, but you think you got the you got the gist of it, and you um, you head out towards the library. Okay. All right. And downstairs, Musette, you are going to go out uh, looking for. Um, looking for bustle and pancake yeah okay i um, guess me, so you're just gonna are you gonna drive or walk yeah just walk okay and and like ask around in the in the area in the area yeah i'm assuming okay. everyone knows who bustle and pancake were are especially since the shop was just so busy last night <laughs> yeah let's go and you Okay, uh, make it. I'll go with to assist her, you know, just beat the eyes in the sky. (laughs) Okay, definitely not because you'll run into trash. (laughs) No, actually, I I ate so much syrup this morning. I'm I I know it sounds weird, but I don't feel that great. In case you need to poop on people, (laughs) yeah, okay, all right, only people that deserve it. Make an investigation check you can do with advantage, or you can each make your own investigation checks. Okay, um. I'm more of a perceptive kind of guy, but I'll make okay. it. Okay. 
You can do perception if you want. Mine if you is want. If you're 17. Just looking around. What's that? 17. Oh. I got a 19 perception flying wow. above the, the street. Okay. Um, yeah, so the um, the various uh, gift shops and things, uh, you kind of get the trail that they've been hitting up the different gift shops, and it seems like they've been at it all night. Uh, and uh, they've gone from one to another to another, and you found them in uh, headed into... Uh, to one, they're they're pretty far. They they they've gotten pretty far away from the um, from the shop now, though. They're they're getting closer to one of the other uh, Casperets. But you managed to track them down, uh, coming out of another shop empty-handed. Yeah, I want to confront them. Did you find that cable yet? No, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I think nobody around here knows even what that thing is. Not surprising, but also not important. Have you yeah. seen <laughs> this guy? It's not, I've been looking for this thing all night. Now it's not important. Yeah, <laughs> you failed. We don't need it anymore. Exactly. It took too long. Oh. Okay, have I seen which guy who? Well, I think Jonathan was going to give the best description, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, they were there when he showed up this morning, correct? Ah, and we sent they them were, away. They were there last night, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that uh, fake cop turned out not to be a cop, we don't, we think, but we're not quite sure. Uh, we're trying to track him down. You ever, uh, anything about him stand out to you guys? You know, how he dressed, how he talked, maybe that gave you an indication of where he was from? No, uh, and and to be honest, I I mean, I kind of remember him in the crowd, you know, waiting for the doors to open. But that's it. You've never seen him before. No, no, never seen him before. Wait, if the movies have taught us anything, mm -hmm. all of you people that steal things, burglar type people, usually hang out at some sort of tavern? <laughs> Would any of your friends know? Yeah, what's the worst bar in town? The <laughs> most Isley Cantina. I resent yeah, that we want stereotype. the worst bar in town. I, I really resent that stereotype, but uh, yes, we'll go to our tavern and find it. <laughs> and to my defense, like I we said, to to I, the had bad guy tavern. Here. I had just gotten here and you guys ambushed me. So, well, believe I really me, wouldn't we, be talking to you unless it was absolutely important. Believe me, we cannot apologize enough. I'm so sorry that that happened. I'm, I hope that we can eventually earn your trust. I don't know. We'll see how today goes. To, oh, yes. Well, we'll uh, we'll check back with you. Uh, I'm going to leave the, that up to Musette. I'm torn. <clears throat> I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so uh, I don't care. Just get about... out of here. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to see us, you again us... until the next time I need you. <laughs> Aren't you just so you... a seagull? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, we'll give you a few hours. Okay, we'll we'll go back home and take a nap, and then we'll come back at it. Okay, thank you for checking. Thank you. All right. So, do I? Does Jonathan remember anything distinct about anything he was wearing, um, or what he looked like? It was a human, right? He yeah, he looked human. He looked bald. He had a. a he had sort of an officious looking robe on, uh, and and uh, Chernovir would know that that, well, Chernovir's not there, I guess. Yeah. Um, Any it, distinctive it like markings or badges or like a lapel or something? He he had a, he did have a, a mark uh, with a, a, a pin that had the, a, an insignia that seemed to represent Isordor X on it. Okay. I just wanted to hear Jonathan's description. It was for selfish reasons. Yeah, I was a big fat mammal, you know, big old hands, <laughs> real jerk in the face. 
<laughs> you just look like a big shit shoulder to me, so I shit on a shoulder. That's <laughs> an avian term that we, you know, we throw around to you landwalkers. You've got other birds like you that you talk to? Is that God asking you that? No, that's that's a uh, pancake. Oh. I don't want to talk about it. Fair enough. Well, we're going we're going to go home and go to sleep. Okay, we'll see you in a few hours. See ya. All right, I guess just go back. What do you think, Musette? Yeah, let's just go back. I that that nap idea sounded really good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, right. maybe. So our only lead, I guess, is the insignia, and it's either official, which means it's attached to the government, or it's not official, which means he's attached to somebody that can forge it. Um. Yeah. So I'm, you, you I, you know, I knew ask... this dimension. I didn't know until like a month ago that there even were more than one dimension. So, I don't know the ins and outs of the city, but maybe if one of you guys did. So after a few hours, you're able to make your way back, uh, back, and it takes two hours for Chertovir to get to the library. Uh, but you've made it there. <laughs> just, just wipe it out, getting back up, driving a block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like home, sweet home. Yeah. <laughs> By the end, he's just like pop, 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 pop. <laughs> going real slow. <laughs> I take a deep breath and I'm like, ah, oh, the smell of books. This is this is my place. All right, I uh, I pull up my sleeves and I look at a big shelf of books and I go and start pu pulling them out to read. Okay, uh, and what are you looking for again? I am looking for any tomes that might explain how to render this uh, stone inert uh, portal. Oh, stone. okay, okay. All right, so uh, make an investigation check with advantage because it's your library. I'm straight. Investigation check. Yeah. Come on. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. 25. Okay, 25. And make another investigation check for your new pair of shoes. Okay, another investigation <laughs> No, check. you don't have to. I'm just kidding. Dude, I found okay. shoes at the library? <laughs> <laughs> So You're yeah, not there. With, a, with a 25, you knew exactly where to go. Uh, you went. You've got a whole section on on uh, on the creation of magic items, and uh, you figured that's probably the best place to learn about this. Okay, so I'm I'm pulling a Gandalf. I'm just reading, like yeah. you know, reading and knowing what to do. So, so um, mm -hmm. they can be. Um, first you have to dispel the magic and uh dispel magic is a low level spell but if you cast it at a much higher level you can you can remove the magic um from an item permanently so casting like a fifth level dispel magic would take the would make a magic item would turn a, a magic rock into a regular rock and then you okay. can, you know, you can destroy a regular rock with a sledgehammer or any other way that you want it. I do not have <coughs> dispel magic. So now I'm wondering if one of my teammates might have it. Looking, I'm looking. Well, I, I mean, I you're not there, but uh, yeah, yeah. So we're not I, there. I close the tome, raising a little cloud of dust. And I go like, okay, this is it. I hope this works. So okay. I'm going to take that book back with me to the Jericho Squad headquarters. Head I back. have it. You have Dispel Magic? I do. What's the highest level you can cast at? Fourth. You can cast fourth, fourth level spells? Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, it's close, but not quite. Uh, so while, while uh, Chertovir is driving back, does anybody else have anything that they're trying to do? It's going to take like probably an hour for uh, Musette to get back. Jonathan could get back faster if he wants to ditch Musette. No, we'll hang out. Okay. I'll ride on her shoulder to keep her company. <laughs> okay. I'm poop on her shoulder. Nope. No, I only do that to people that deserve it. Okay. That's good. Good to, good to hear. Um, 
anybody else that's still in the still downstairs or upstairs or you know the, the business has opened there's a huge amount of stuff in piles upstairs and bentley has asked for help with sorting it and uh, pricing it and getting it on shelves if anybody wants to to work on that that's still that would be i guess Lori or ralph sure i've been doing enough yard sales <sighs> okay <laughs> Yeah, it's your oh. anti-hoarder. You, yeah. you have to do it in real life and then came and there did it in d, &D. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Walk into okay, my garage. So, this yeah. house is clear. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, um, go ahead. And back at the um back at the library, can I can I get back on my bike? And I I eye the bike a little suspiciously, but it's like now I'm a little more familiar with it. Yeah, you, so, you've, you've gotten familiar enough that you don't have to make a check for the. I trip put on back. my sunglasses and I'm like, let's give this baby a ride. <laughs> okay. And uh, Lori and Ralph, if Ralph, are you help, helping also with sorting through the stuff? Yes. Okay. But uh, both of you can make an investigation check looking for cool stuff upstairs. Seventeen. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. Is this the I upstairs rolled, uh, of the shop? Yeah. Okay. I rolled a 14. Okay. So, yeah, with a 17 and a 14, you you um, you um, you root through the stuff. You see a lot of kind of mundane junk in there and some things that would, some things would be uh, valuable, other things wouldn't. You kind of give your advice the best you can based on your, you know, knowledge from the Fifth Dominion. Uh, and, and Bentley can tell you which things are rare and which ones aren't. But you also find some uh, magical items that may be helpful to you guys. Lo uh, does Zoe have detect magic? I do. Okay. So if you, um, you, you see some things that with runes and stuff and you kind of realize that if you put on detect magic, you can figure out which, the, which of these things are magic items and which ones aren't. Okay. So, so you want me to go ahead and cast that now? Yeah. Okay. You can also do that one as a ritual. So if you take 10 minutes, it doesn't take a slot. Yeah. So you just have to take 10 minutes to do it instead of like one action, but it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. So then you don't have to waste a spell slot. If you want to cast it, you can. Um, why is it not getting off of here? Yeah, and that's what those ritual spells mean. So anyway, while when you cast detect magic, uh, the the magic items that you find, uh, there's a box full of bullets that seem to be magic. Uh, magic there's bullets? a, a roll, rolled up piece of paper that looks like a scroll similar to what Chirgovir had. Uh, that's magic. Uh, there's a, a a vial of liquid that's magic. There are some boots that are magic. If Chertovir was here, he would say that he needed that new pair of shoes. These boots uh, are made for stalking. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's just what they'll do. Yeah, actually, there are two uh, two vials of a liquid that are, are um, that seem to be magic. Uh, there's an amulet, uh, kind of a necklace that's magic. Actually, three. I'm sorry, three vials that are magical, and uh, a cloak. That's magic. And I don't know who, if anyone can identify, uh, if you can identify, you can tell what they do, or if you want to take the time to uh, attune to them, you can do that too. It takes like an hour to, to kind of get to know them and attune to figure out what they are. So I guess the only one that would have that ability probably would be Zoe, right? Can you identify things? All I see is junk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, Stuff I can't fit in my non-existent pockets. No. Well, you're not junk. there. Inedible junk. Yeah. 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 You're still you're still making your way back to the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But after you know they've been searching through this stuff for for a good hour, so you, you know uh, Jonathan and Musette, you make your way back in also. Okay, I was nice to Pancake and Bustle. <laughs> she was. Congratulations. I saw it with my own eyes. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you for making the effort. Uh, 
It looks like, um, Zoe, you've pushed some things aside here. Are these things that you want to keep? Um, yeah, we need to kind of take a look at these things because they, something seems a little bit odd about them. Ah. We, we definitely don't want to let them clearance out, so. I don't know. Like I said, it's all junk. So, I don't, I don't uh, understand what you're, what, what everyone's picking up out of this stuff. So Bentley says, I can, I can identify these things. Hold on. Uh, so Bentley um, looks at the box full of bullets and he says, uh, these are, are uh, walloping ammunition. I want to ask Bentley, have you seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> no, I haven't. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? <laughs> oh, that's the movie. Oh, the movie. No, I haven't seen the movie. Next time in the Fifth Dominion, I, I think you'll get a kick out of it. I'll, I'll try to get hold of a copy for you. It was Dr. Brown. <laughs> it but had some walloping bullets in it. The, what's their name? Well, yeah, our new friends got rid of his VHS player. Musette has, also can identify things. Um, yeah, but I just got back. <laughs> Okay, so walloping in ammunition, basically they have to make a strength saving throw or they get knocked over if you get shot with it. So there are um, 20 of them that are rifle bullets and 20 of them that are handgun bullets. Uh, the spell scroll is a level eight spell incendiary cloud. Uh, there's a potion of, of uh, stone giant strength, boots of elven kind, Potion of Greater Healing, and if anybody wants this stuff, you guys should be writing it down, I guess. Otherwise, Bentley's just going to sell it. And uh, a Dark Shard Amulet. What's that do? A potion of Invulnerability and a Cloak of Billowing. Well, I'll take that healing potion. What's the amulet do? Yeah. It's uh, fashioned from a single shard of a resilient extra planar material originating from the realm of a warlock patron. So this is, uh, while you're wearing it, you gain the following benefits. So this is from a, for a warlock. Which is me. You can use the amulet as a spell casting focus for your warlock spells, but you already kind of have your hand as the focus. Uh, you can cast one cantrip that you don't know, uh, and the cantrip must be a warlock uh, on the warlock spell list. And you have to make a, a, a DC 10 intelligence arcana check. If the so check su succeeds, you can cast the spell. If the check fails, the spell fails, and the action used to cast the spell is wasted. So basically, it gives, when you put it on, it gives you it gives you an extra cantrip spell that you can cast. But you have to be a warlock. So that would definitely be for uh, for Ralph. I think we should at least keep the potions. Yeah. What's uh, that? I what's was... it called again? Dark Shard Amulet. Okay. I took Dark uh, Shard Amulet at all. You've got boots of elven kind, the walloping ammunition, you got three potions, uh, a spell <laughs> scroll of incendiary cloud, level eight. Who all has um, firearms? I've got an automatic pistol, so I could probably take some of those walloping Bullets. ammo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and twenty. I, of does, them are, doesn't use that have them? Because you uh, said you said twenty were rifle and twenty were for pistol. For handguns, yeah. Yeah. God knows I never hit anything with mine, so <laughs> let's make them roll for it. Okay, yeah. so is, is that, are you going to take some of the walloping ammunition? No, nah, so we can have them. And I think Chertovir had a rifle, although he's not uh, proficient with it, so he doesn't. I do. It's hard to hit. But, yes, sir. Yeah. So, do you want the the twenty rifle bullets that are walloping ammunition? I'm not there, am I? Oh yeah. I think we're all back. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm after, slowly. Yeah, I would yeah. say it's been enough time now that you've made it back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll definitely take those uh, those bullets. You so should you hang said... on to these potions too. Yeah. And the scroll. Okay, I wasn't paying attention because I thought I wasn't there. So, um, okay. Uh, scroll. What does a scroll do? Do I recognize it? Incendiary it, cloud, eighth level. It's, it's level eight incendiary cloud. Fire. 
incendiary. Fire. I'll take Fire. It. Fire. Use this. I found a bunch of walloping stuff, but I don't see. The only bullets I see are for. Are, is that sling bullets? Doesn't that. Should, wouldn't that be. Yeah, so the y- yes, right, because they don't they they don't put them in there as as rifle bullets and handgun bullets because it's a medieval D and D is a medieval game, but okay. uh, but but they are because I said they are. So it still does your normal bullet damage, but uh, they have a chance. You know, it, it has a chance of knocking people over when you shoot them with it. What were the potions that that are still available for me to grab? A uh, potion of stone giant strength. Potion uh, a potion of healing and a potion of invulnerability. Strength, potion of healing, and potion of invulnerability. Yeah. Okay. okay, I put the bullets in for me, the 20. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and how many bullets did I grab? 20. 20 bullets. You got it for my rifle? Yeah, so those are, those are uh, walloping ammunition, they're called. Okay, walloping. Yeah. That's a magic enchantment? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. so you have 20 bullets that have a chance of knocking somebody over every time you shoot them with it. Nice. It'll pack a wallop. Yeah. And there's also boots of elven kind. So I can look that up, but my memory is that those give you, uh, make you more stealthy. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, I'd take them, but uh, look down at my web feet. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, they, now they I got would 27. fit on you if you put them on. They would conform to your webby feet. Duh. But I don't know how much you're going to be sneaking around with boots. Yeah, I, and I, I'm kind of. It's more the unless it's really necessary. I'm trying not to get gear because. So they give you advantage on stealth checks. So anybody that's not particularly stealthy or dexterous, it'd be Ralph. good to have. Hey Ralph. <laughs> hey, what's up? I'm listening. <laughs> I need this stuff. Papa needs a new pair of shoes. I mean, are they going to fit right. my aesthetic? Will my feet even fit in them? That- just explained. Yeah, so be- yes. because they're magic items, they automatically fit when you put them on. Uh, the potion of healing that I'm grabbing, is that greater, superior, or really supreme cool. potion of healing? It's it's, uh, it's just a regular? Potion of, it's potion of healing, yeah. It's, okay, it's got not it. It's one of those other ones. I've added that, plus the bullets. Okay. I did not grab the uh, elven <laughs> boots. Okay, so we have Elven Boots, Potion of Stone Giant elven Strength, boots. and Potion of Invulnerability. I took and those, And a Cloak didn't I? of Billowing. I took the Potion of Healing, the Potion of Oh, stone I took giants. the Potion of Healing. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I well, called I it first. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That's what I was asking what was available. Uh, let me go ahead and remove that from me. So it's kind I only of my have... thing. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. All put the cloak of billowing on to see what happens okay yep it uh, shrinks down to your size so okay. the cloak of billowing can be used to billow thus make the wearer look impressive it confers no mechanical advantage but looks cool so, when- <laughs> so i'm gonna take it outside and like <laughs> catch some thermals and then have it billow like i'm a cool kite and then yeah. come back. You in would do that anyway, off. even if it wasn't yeah. magic. No, nah, I'm not gonna. I'm just goofing around. I'm just trying it on. I'm not gonna yeah. keep this thing. Squawk, squawk. <laughs> I'm just gonna go play with it a little bit. Oh, I guess I can't show you the drawing I did of Gregorius's folly. Oh, no. Shit. <laughs> oh, you oh, just made sucks. your face disappear. You cast invisibility on yourself. I did. I did. I know is how, that how it works. It is. I know how to do that. I just take out this. This is my little drawing of the campment and Gregorius's oh. folly would fire on the top. And there's a oh, cyber cool. truck over there. <laughs> cyber cyber truck. truck. Yeah, cyber truck. Why not? Cool. Nice. There you go. All right. Um, so has everybody sorted through all the stuff that they want? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. And this process of sorting and pricing this junk took you pretty much all day. You guys had lunch in the middle of it. Uh, Bentley made sandwiches and lemonade. Um, but uh, you guys are pretty exhausted. And at this point, um, we can take a break and everybody's going to be going to sleep. But don't, uh, yeah, so. Um, Short rest? Long uh, rest. It, it'll be, end up being a long rest, but not, but not quite yet. So we'll, but we'll take a, a real life break here. 
If you like the character artwork for Jericho Squad, check out the art of Asya Yordanova. And Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. If you like the intro theme, check out music by composer Ben Warren, who's a good friend of the Clive Barker podcast. In-game music provided by Tabletop Audio. Joe and Catalina come from Little Spark Films, who recently helped with Joe Bob Briggs's The Last Drive-In on Shudder. Check out Catalina Carita's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. She's currently reading Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror which BarkerCast is also revisiting with our audio commentaries. These make great companion pieces together. And finally, if you want to support us at the BarkerCast, a great way to do that and show us off is the BarkerCast Tee Public Store. We've got a Jericho Squad crew shirt. We've got a Cenobium. We've got a Marcus's pinhead design. There's all kinds of great designs, and they're, and they're not just t-shirts either. So please go check it out. Uh, get something and support us. Thanks. I was recently asked to help moderate the new Facebook group, Clive Barker Book Club. If you like discussion of Clive's books, you should check it out. As you're drifting off to sleep, make a wisdom saving throw or make a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. Oh. What does that mean, disadvantage? Means you roll, roll twice, twice and you take the lower number. Oh, well. Oh, shit. Sorry. That was 12. not nearly as bad as it could have been. 12. I got, a, I got a 25 for my first one. I got a seven. Eight. Oh, my second has 11. So I take 11. Okay. Okay. My my lowest was 12. Okay. Is that it? Has everybody rolled? Yes. Yeah, my lowest was 12, too. So everybody that got below a 14. <clears throat> you thought you had gone to sleep, but uh, you ended up um, upstairs on the couch and you decided to all watch a movie. You're all watching Johnny Mnemonic. And the weird thing oh. about it is the... Um, How are we watching it? There's no movies in there. Yeah, so so um, actually, Rob, can we go back to the upstairs map? So everybody failed? Everybody got below a 14? I got below a 14. Yeah, yeah I think we yeah. all did. I did. Okay. And so, yeah, place yourselves where you'd be sitting. You know, the, the TV is up there in the upper right corner. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. I'm clicking on the Zoom <laughs> meeting instead of roll 20. Oh, okay. Oh, happens. I can't get through the room. Jonathan's uh, definitely a sit through, sit too close. Kind of oh, apparently I I can't <laughs> sit just in the middle of the couch. right up there. Okay, I guess I'm sitting on the yeah. That's the rest of the couch. It's approximate. It, it tries to force you into a square. Yeah, it looks like a man spreading in the middle of the couch. If you hold <laughs> option while you drag your character, you can drop it anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm fine where I am, just right cool, in the cool. middle of the couch. You're obstructing Lori, uh, Zoe's view. I was sitting there first. Yeah. I don't. I'm. I'm not a fan of that movie. So go ahead and obstruct. <laughs> Future, 1999. It's the internet. Yeah. The brain can take a whopping two gigabytes of data. Yeah. Our brains only. Yeah. Like 250 megabytes. It was silly. Yeah. Was stupid. The shorts fur is great though. William Gibson's but awesome. Remember the, the video the videotape box ha had the opening so that Keanu Reeves had the spool of of uh, VHS tape on his forehead because that oh, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. I so, didn't understand um, that marketing. Yeah, so you don't have a VCR, uh, and but but you you do have <coughs> this strange uh, strange video player thing, and um, in order to make it work, you had to take the disc out of the package and put it on a rotary dial phone and on the rotary it starts kind of spinning around and playing the movie wait what? Laser. 
Not a laser okay. disc. <laughs> Wait, I thought this was a Clive Barker podcast, not a David Lynch podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Oh, We're yeah, crossing you've, the you've started watching Johnny Mnemonic, and and uh, on the for anybody phone. who's seen the movie already, it's maybe this is the same. It's hard to tell if this is the same thing or not. Okay, okay. And uh, Churduvir, you, um, your your um, scarf, or which is your your ribbon sword, feels kind of a little thicker and bigger than norm than it would normally. <coughs> <clears throat> um okay i i but think you, that's a little know, weird you, yeah it's a little weird but you kind of you're kind of relaxed into it okay <laughs> okay all right it i know zoe i didn't I say a thing i i there's so many softballs there <laughs> that's how you know it's a dream <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, my ribbon somebody else is feeling a little heavier up. and thicker. <laughs> Tell you no, it's a dream. You've got a big old scarf around your neck. I can't. Uh, I can't. I can't look at it. It's like the next level after the pearl necklace. Okay, we gotta stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> okay, stop. All right, because if I get nervous laughter, I can't stop either. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, you guys are just hanging around watching uh, Johnny Nemo. I'm watching very intently. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how long we've been watching, but I still don't know what the internet is. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll be like blabbering over my shoulder, like this guy's a really big deal in the fifth <sighs> minion now. Like, like he's a really big deal. He's like going to be president someday of the whole world. <laughs> this and, guy. And I'll just be Keanu Reeves fanboying out. He can barely act. That's not the point. I've Jesus seen better. can barely act. He only said one thing the entire I've seen, time. I've seen better plays from Pluthero Kexus back in the Erethemek Kesperit. Bentley says, now that's not fair. I like the way he says, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know, Why doesn't he go it's to like his encompasses phone all of reality and all these other realities. And I, I really empathize with it now that I'm transferring dimensions. Okay, bird. Okay, okay, we get Wait, it. Is that what's okay. happening in this movie? Whoa! <laughs> By the way, I just found the tape with a window where you can see this pool, and it's like twenty bucks on eBay. Tempted. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We have it recorded on VHS somewhere. Wow. So, um, everybody, HBO. make a perception check with disadvantage. You're uh -huh. feeling kind of relaxed and stuff. Still. Okay. Nine. Okay. Nine. I'm really into Keanu Reeves. Nine. Three. Three. I'm. Nine. Oh, plus what? Five. Wow. <laughs> hey, everybody just froze for like 30 seconds for oh, me. I'm... Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear so... you. Yep. So okay, make, gotcha. a make a perception check with disadvantage if you haven't done it already. Okay, perception check. Yeah. So nine. <clears throat> Ralph okay. is at nine. So it sounds like. Okay, that's one. Nine. 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 Oh. So, Churduvir, um, something doesn't feel right. This thing around your neck is kind of slimy and wiggly. And you think you hear uh, maybe downstairs? It sounds like people rifling around through the through stuff down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you kind of you're really you really kind of want to just hang around here with your friends, but something's nagging you, and it's, something's not right. Okay, so I I try to get up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you uh, you stand up from the couch. Okay. Where are you I, going, man? This is the best part. Uh, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Um, okay. So make I a, gotta uh, make a strength check with disadvantage. Strength check. Yeah. It's not a saving throw, just a check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Okay getting up and walking around it feels like 
kind of walking through, you know, up to your knees in the sand. Uh huh. It's hard I've, to move, and it I've takes had a, dreams it, like it that. It takes before. a lot of effort. Yeah. I I shake my head and I close my eyes and I try to open them back up and and I try to understand whether whether or not I'm actually dreaming. I go like, this is a dream. This can't be real. Okay, make a uh, make another wisdom saving throw. Okay. This time with without disadvantage. You just make a regular wisdom saving throw. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, it's you just it doesn't seem right, but you're just not able to get out of it. You're having a tough time. You're having a hard time moving. Uh, all your friends are just kind of just sitting there watching the watching the movie, and and they're uh, they're not helping. I feel like this weird thing around my neck, and I, I reach out at my collar, and I, I I try to understand what's going on. Okay, and and you look down on it, and it it's not your ribbon sword at all. It's a um, it's a, a the it's a righteous. Oh, okay. So I go like, whoa. <laughs> Just, yeah, and and once it's uh, once it realizes that you've kind of you're onto it, it starts uh, constricting and uh, trying to strangle you. Okay, so I I try to pull it away from my neck. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, make a uh, make a strength saving or make, make a you can do acrobatics or I'm not acrobatics, I'm sorry, athletics. Athletics check. Yeah. Uh oh, I got three. Oh, okay. You you try really hard to pull, but your fingers just kind of slip off of its slippery hide, and it uh, it continues to strangle you, and you take two points of damage. Oh, can I speak? Can I yell out? Yeah. Okay. You you can also try to wake up now because uh, you know you just took some damage. Yeah. So uh, you have advantage to, to to make your wisdom saving throw. Okay, I'll try to do that because there's no point in yelling if I'm dreaming. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a wisdom saving throw. Yeah. I got an eight. And you can roll a second time. Okay. You, now you have advantage because you got hurt. Twenty three. Okay. So yeah, you wake up. You're not upstairs. You're in your bed. The righteous isn't in there with you. Um, but you wake up and you do hear some like rifling around outside of your door. Okay. So I, I jump out of bed and I yell out the alarm. I say, guys, wake up. There's someone in here. We're, we're under attack. Okay. Um, everybody else make a perception check. Oh. 22. Wow. Yeah, I'm Zoe, you, you definitely. I also got a 22. Up. Wow. I got a nine. I got 11. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a rock. So, Muzad and. and uh, you must have kids. You can sleep through anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so Muzad and Ralph are having a little tougher time, but everybody else wakes up and you hear what Chertovir is hearing that there's some kind of rifling around going on downstairs in the. Uh, just outside of your doors in the, in your rooms. You're right, I upstairs. will immediately cast invisibility and stealthily move to down the downstairs common area to see what's going on. Okay, well you're in your room downstairs. You're not Yeah, and so I'll there. pop I'll turn invisible and stealthily like try to be as quiet as I can and pop out and okay. see what's going on. Okay. Um now should I do some kind of a I I I don't know whether it would be a perception check, but um, is this like a natural dream state? Is yeah. it magical? Is it chemical? What's going on? Uh, well, you're awake. Was, now. was something in the pancakes? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> well, um, so one thing uh, is that it, it felt a lot like the time that you all had a shared dream uh, way back in episode zero. Uh, it felt really similar to that. So you were having a shared dream experience, which makes you think it was magical. Yeah, I yell out, it's a righteous. We're under a spell from a righteous. Okay. Okay. And so you guys step out the doors. So Jonathan kind of poked his head out, right? And uh, Chertovir, did you, you came, you stepped out also? Yeah. 
and Musette and and uh, and um, Ralph are still asleep. Oh, it looks so nice sleeping in their beds. And, and and Zoe, what what are you what are you up to? I'm I'm sorry, I was reading a spell. What what did you where are you asking me? Uh, what's what's Zoe doing? Oh oh, you did you're doing um, you were trying to figure out if it was a magical dream or poison. Yeah. Or, okay. And uh, Bentley is still in his bed. I examined the the bottom outside of my room, the 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 area with the tiles. So when you look outside, you see that the room is full, or you look out of your door. You you this is for for also Jonathan and uh, and Chertovir. Um You see Nullianax. You see uh, the righteous, who's kind of standing oh in the middle of the of the portal area. Uh, you see voiders, which only Chertovir would know what those are. Yeah. And uh, and two Gekagex. Jesus Christ! Remember that yeah. it's a big, uh, big pink, uh, pink tiger-looking translucent creatures with a hammerhead shark face. Oh my God! Okay, now I definitely call out for the alarm. Can I try to get into uh, Ralph's bed uh, bedroom and wake him up? Uh, there is a voider right in front of you as soon as you step out of your door. Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Well, I got mage armor on. Um, I guess I'm going to yell out alarm again and be like, wake up, everybody. We're under attack. And I draw my um, my ribbon sword. Okay. And um, before everybody rolls for initiative, it is like after 11. So in this battle, it's going to probably take a while. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll probably stop here and save the battle for next time. Sounds like a great that. plan. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Wow. You're definitely trying to kill us, huh, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the best you can. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this spell that I'm looking at it will work at the beginning of the battle because I have I'm an idea. invisible and quite close to the stairs, so I'm satisfied. Oh, okay. Do you Man, have fail on us? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, remember yeah. that you that you were invisible. Great. Well, we failed. We failed our role. <laughs> oh, that okay. worked. <laughs> Actually, I, I really expected only half of the people to get stuck in the dream. I didn't expect the whole group. So I thought some people would be battling downstairs and some people would be oh, like, yeah. trying to wake well, up. That's the fun part of, you know, D&D. Yeah. &D. yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. This looks like it's going to be intense. This looks like <laughs> yeah. it's going to be really intense. But now we're we have different level spells and stuff, so I think we could probably take them. That's true. Yeah. And the last gotta, time you guys saw a Gekka Gek, you were like level two or level one. So. Yeah. And Musette has those walls of fire and stuff that fuck up everything that moves. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's burn, cool. Whatever. I'm we're you we're in an enclosed space, though, so that's going to be tricky. Don't move. She can't burn us if we don't move. <laughs> 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 Too bad there's not doors leading from one room to the next. Oh, yeah. 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 That All right. Help. Cool. This is All a right. good cliffhanger. Yeah, Jesus we'll, Christ. So we'll leave it there. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our Tee Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Thanks for listening.